give you the screen there. And while that's coming up, uh, Mosa Armo is the owner of the Stock Switch, which she founded in December of 2012. She is a magna cum laude graduate from Gettysburg College and a very successful and had a very successful career as a mortgage broker for 17 years. She gave it up in 2008 to pursue, pursue her love for trading. Melissa became a successful trader after she developed her own system for trading that relies on capitalizing on the big moves that occur near the open of the stock market every day. She, she has built an international business that informs clients how to successfully trade uh, those uh, tr strategies using her system. So, Melissa, um, again, welcome back. Thanks uh, for being here and go ahead and get started whenever you're ready. Welcome. Can everybody hear me? Let me know if the sound is clear. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Winvesting. It's great to be back. And today I'm going to talk about what I love, which is gaps and the market. So my name is Melissa Armo, for those of you that don't know me. And if you'd like more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Today I'm going to do a very basic webinar for those of you that have no idea what a gap is and no idea how to read a chart. I'm going to talk about technical analysis and I'm going to talk about candlesticks. And I'm going to talk about charts and the things that I have on my charts. So this will be really a review for those of you that are already trading or if you're already trading gaps. Uh, I still think you'll learn something new even if you do currently day trade, uh, which would be about the way that I look at gaps and the way that I approach gaps in the market. I only do one thing, which is gaps. And I will tell you that I prefer to short. Now that doesn't mean that I never go long any gaps in the market I do sometimes, but it's rare. I prefer to short. And one of the reasons is that selling action that comes into stocks happens very quickly. And I like to be in and out of trades fast. That's just me, it's my personality. I also find myself that I'm less at risk when I trade like that. And then I know that I have got the money on the table and it's booked. It's never over to the fat lady sings kind of philosophy. When you're in the market, you don't know. Although occasionally I will do options where I'm in them overnight, but you can day trade options. And I'm going to talk about a trade actually that I called today and one of my students did and he just wrote me a nice email. He did it and he doubled his money in one day in an option trade today. So feel free to ask me questions. I see everybody's uh, writings up there and the questions. You can go ahead. But this is really going to be a, a lecture that's going to introduce you to the market and gaps. And we also are going to talk about the last week's results. So I put in here the gap picks that I had from all last week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then this week, which was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I'll kind of give you an idea of some of the stock symbols that I looked at. I don't have all the chart picks in here, but I got the symbols. So you can go look them up yourself, the, all the ones that I did, and we're going to talk about that as well. Let me see here. I can see the questions. Let me just make sure I move this over talking okay okay great will there be breaks between the speakers oh no that was really this morning somehow I just went back to the beginning of time okay <laughs> it just took me back to 9 a.m. that was funny all right here we go these were the results for the last week and a half okay because today is only Wednesday so I did a full week which was last week and then I did the ones for this week too. So these were all shorts, I will tell you that. Now somebody's asking, is the system based solely upon daily charts? The answer is yes. But you can look at other charts and see gaps on any time frame. You can look at a one minute chart or a 15 minute chart and see the gap. But I have a method that I created, which I'll talk about at the end, uh, which is what I teach in my class. It's a rating system and how I determine the picks, and these were all the picks. In other words, last Monday was QCOM. How did I determine QCOM was a good short from the daily chart? That's how I determined it with my rating system. But you can see gaps and look at gaps on any time frame. okay? It, can you use an Ameritrade platform? I've never traded with Ameritrade. My answer probably to that would be yes, because if you can see pre-market and post-market data in stocks, which I'm sure you can with Ameritrade, because they're a huge, huge, huge broker dealer then uh, but you got to call them to find out as long as you can get post and pre-market data to see the gap and a daily chart and a one minute chart I'm sure you can use them but I'd call and double check with them do I scan to find stocks that meet criteria yes I scan but I manually scan using my eyes and my brain not with a scanner 
You can actually buy scanners, and if you take my class, you can program the points into a scanner, but that's not what I do. I use my own brain and my own mind. And actually, we're gonna look at a gap that was a pick today that I, that I you know, looked at in the room. It was PBI, this one down here. Uh, let me just see here. Does he use a charting program? There is no special charting program or software. You can use any charting program to trade my system. I don't sell any charting programs. I just have my class, which I teach you what to do. Can you automate the system for placing trades directly with your brokerage? That's what I'm saying. If you want to do that, you have to set it up yourself. I don't do that. I don't have any special software that I sell or market myself. Um, you can really trade any place that you want to, as long as you can short the stock. Or if you're doing an option trade, if you're gonna short it, you buy the put or buy a call. And you have to be able to see the gap. That's what I was saying. And gaps happen in the pre and post market. And we're going to look at some charts. So good questions here to start out. Oops, wait a minute. Let me go back. So Monday was QCOM. Tuesday was Verizon. This was a short. It was a winner. Verizon was a short. It was a winner. Last Wednesday, TXT, short. It was a winner. Okay. Thursday, Matt, short. It was a winner. Okay. Friday was Juniper, short. It was a loser. This was lost. Then CL was a short. Oop, I spelled that wrong. This was a winner. Monday TPX, short winner. Tuesday UA was short. It was a loser, okay? Wednesday was PBI, short, which was today. It was a winner. Okay, so of these ones here, of those nine trading days, okay, or nine uh, stock symbols, I'm sorry, because there was two on Friday, eight trading days and nine stock symbols, was a 77% win ratio using my system. So the bottom line is that the rating system I use to determine whether the stock is a long or a short, it works. This is the reason that I'm successful trading for eight years and it's the reason that I have a successful business and it's the reason my students are successful. Just because you find a stock that's gapping, which we're gonna go over gaps because I'm gonna go through charts and we're gonna do this, but I wanted to show you here in a minute. Uh, just because you see something in the market that's gapping. You have to have a determination which way to trade it, long or short. And it actually doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're looking at any chart as a day trade or anything that you wanna buy or sell, whatever you wanna do, this is if you're trading stocks in the US market, even if it's a different strategy other than gaps, for example. The only way you really make money is if you're able to predict the correct directional bias for the move, okay? If you can't accurately predict where it's going to go in the right direction, then you're not gonna make money in it. In other words, for example, if you would have gone long PBI today, here, let me see if I can bring up that live. I don't know if, here, let's see if this works. It, it, tell me if you can see, I'm gonna see if I can bring up, can you see, can you see that chart? Does that come up? I just flipped on, I don't know if I have to click on and off. Can you see PBI? Can you see this live right now or do you still see the PowerPoint? I don't know if that worked or not. Can you see it? Wait, there's a lot of questions there. Oh, we're having a ton of questions here. Um, you can see it, okay. All right, well, th this is good. I'll flip back to the PowerPoint. Do you see if you would have gone long this, this, this was today, this was a gap today. If you would have gone long this, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have made any money at all. So it, you, the only way that you would have made money doing this today is to go short because the stock dropped. High of the day was 1508, low of the day was 1241. This went to an insane number. It never looked back. So getting back to this here. What I'm saying is that the only way that you can make money doing anything at all, whether it's scats or something else, is if you're in the direction right. Otherwise, nine times out of 10, you will lose, okay? So here is today's gap. It was a bullish gap, it was Apple. Now, I made an option call in this today for the people in the room in the letter, and Apple had earnings. It had earnings last night, and it gapped up. Okay, now I'm gonna show you this here. This is a daily chart. Someone asked about the daily. So the stock closed last night. What is a gap? A gap is when the closing price of the stock is at one price point and then it opens the next day. So this is four o'clock last night on the Tuesday. Today is Wednesday and it opens up and it gapped up. 
So it opened here at approximately 127-ish, something like that was a low. So the stock gapped up. This is Apple. So you could have day traded this today and gone long, or you could have done an option in this. So before the open, I saw the gap in Apple and sent out to the people in the option letter, buy Apple calls right into the open, get them, take them, do it, do it right away, whatever, get in, okay? So I had people ready to go to get this before the open to put the order in to do it. So you could have day traded this or you could still be in it. Why? Because it was the, this was the call. It was to buy Apple 130 calls expiring February 10th. Boom. Guess what? Last time I looked, it was 40 some cents away from 130 and it's got a week and a half left. So I got, had a, I just got this email. I just got this email like an hour ago from one of my students. He said, thanks for the great Apple option trade today. Didn't see the email until a little late, but got 40 contracts at 44 cents. Low in the day in the option chain was 25 cents, by the way. He sold half at 88 cents and then went to lunch and came back and saw him at a dollar. It went over a little bit over 102 was the high in the option chain on this one today. The 130 calls. He said he sold out. Sold out so the room and option letter almost covered this trade alone. Uh, he, he's in my trading room as a day trader and he also has the option letter. He said, thank you when you're just getting started. This was very nice. Anyways, I want to show you here how this client then made money today. He bought 40 contracts of 4,000 shares. The cost was not cheap. He, he must have really believed in my call. Um, so he was basically, 40 contracts cost him 1,760 bucks. He doubled his money. He sold it at 88 cents, which makes 100% sense because he doubled his money on the day, although he still could be in it because it's gonna go over 130 between now and the time they expire, which is February 10th. But you have time value in here. So he doubled his money in one day. How did he do this? How did I make the call? It's based on the gap rating. It's based on the gap itself, which we're going to talk about. And that's the rest of the class today. But I wanted to show you an example, a real live example of a person that just happened today that's in my room and in the letter that's done the class that just made money. So you can do this. The, there's one underlying thing that you have to understand about trading. And I, and I get that there's a lot of different ways to trade. And there's a lot of good people that are talking all day today. And whatever you decide to do, whatever way or method you decide to trade, it's up to you. You have to do something that makes sense to you, that resonates with you. But I will tell you this, you can make money in the stock market. You can. You can. I know that a lot of people know that I'm doing it, but I really have real live people that are regular people like this man here that is, and many, many others that are doing it. So this is not beyond the realm of possibility. It does not have to take you 100,000 years. It doesn't have to cost millions of dollars. You don't have to wait forever. You don't have to suffer and blow up accounts 100 times over. It does not have to take that long, but you do have to find a system that works and you do have to listen to your mentor, whoever that is. And there's a lot of people here today that are teaching different things. Uh, my thing is gaps, but whatever you decide to do, you gotta listen to the person Obviously, my people believe in me because the guy was seventeen hundred bucks today. And if the trade had gone flat, he, he would have lost. And that that wasn't that wasn't a nothing amount of money to risk in a trade. Forty contracts in Apple is actually a big size. Okay, that's four thousand shares basically. All right, now let's get into it. How did I do this? The points. That's how I made the call, and I did it in the pre-market. And somebody said, "What do you need? All you need is a chart, a chart, a daily chart that you can see." the pre-market data of Apple, or you could have seen it last night, but you can't take into a trade at the nighttime. You can't do options because they close at four o'clock. They're only open from 9.30 to four. Although you can trade the pre and post market as normal trades, but I don't do that. I think it's too wild. No, I did not short the gap. No, 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 no. Why would you think I would have shorted the gap on Apple? Cliff is asking this. No, 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 no. In fact, here, hold on. Let's bring up Apple before I get into the, to the teaching part here. Let's switch it out. Can you see the chart again? No. Where would you have gotten that I would have shorted this? I, that's what I was saying at the beginning of the, of the class here today. I do go long and short, but I prefer to short but I'm showing you here that a long worked here today too, but it was an option trade, but you could have day traded it too. But no, 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 no. I would never have shorted this because it is a long, it is a bullish gap that per my system would have met the criteria. I would have never called the option trade. 
In fact, I was so confident in it, I didn't even wait till the stock opened. I made the call to the people before 9.30. You couldn't have taken the trade after 9.30, but I wanted the people to get it because I wanted people to take it and get it and get the order out into the open, which is what that guy missed it right away. But, but I'm sure somebody in the room in the letter got it. I'll get other emails, I'm sure, about the people that did it. But the point is, no, it was a long. It was a long. Okay? Look at this. This is what I'm saying. If you had shorted this today, you would have lost. And you know what? Some people did. I'm certain that some people did. I'm certain that some people shorted the stock today and lost. Now, where would they have shorted it? Some day traders probably thought this was going to fill the gap. And they probably did. They probably shorted it. Oh, wait, let me go. Today's date is, hold on. That's before. That's, I'm gonna, this is a one-minute chart. And then I'll get back to the class here because I have a lot to talk about today. And I only have an hour. This thing here is what many, many people don't understand about gaps. People probably tried to short this in here. Day traders probably shorted this in here after booped over the high. Probably shorted in here and never even broke the low. They shorted probably here again because it did a lower high. It did a lower high here and I know how day traders think, but guess what? I don't trade based on what day traders are doing other people. I trade based on what institutions are doing that created a gap. And guess what? They're buying the stock. Institutions in the market are the ones that I trade with on the side of that and I've been very good at reading it. The same thing with PBI. PBI got sold off today and dumped like a, it just, I'm going to, I just made up a new word today. It's called a super swoosh because that stock dropped all day. It's going to zero. The, this thing today got bought by institutions. So day traders, I'm sure, did try to short this stock today because it made a lower high in here. And they might have shorted it again in here, but nobody made any money shorting this today because it was a long. And why was it a long? Because institutions bought this stock and they're the ones that are controlling the stock and you gotta be with those people. It's the big money in the market and that's the only way you make money trading. And that's what my method and system predicts. It predicts what the institutions are gonna do on the live day. On the live day, you see what they're doing in the gap. And then I see the gap. I don't predict the gap itself. I wait till it gaps. I didn't know if the stock would gap up or down. I kind of had a feeling. But the bottom line is that this gapped up. You wait, then it does the gap, then you rate it, then you look at it, and the rating system determines if the institutions are going to carry it through and keep buying it, which they did here, or sell it into the gap. But no, 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 no. There are day traders, I'm sure, that shorted today and lost. And I'm sure it's, there are people that are probably going to try to short this another time soon, but it's not a short. And let's go back to the class. Okay, now let's talk about online trading, why you can do it yourself today, the change in information flow and trading for a career, okay? Now, why can you do this? You can do this because the spread nowadays, trading, is usually very tight. Sometimes there are spreads in stocks, the difference between the ask and the bid, that are wide. I typically kind of try to shy away from wide spreads. I don't like doing something that's more than 30 cents. I really have to feel like 100% conviction if I even take anything that's over a 10 cent spread. Usually I try to trade things that are tight, one to two pennies, okay? Commissions nowadays when you're day trade are cheap. You can find places you can pay five bucks or four bucks or two bucks. If you're paying 99 dollars a, a, an in and an out, that's 20 bucks a trade, you're paying too much. You gotta get that rate down. And there's tons and tons of places and you can trade really cheap nowadays, okay? Everybody out there that's a broker dealer, they're fighting for commissions, they want clients, Shop around, okay? Again, I'm not a broker dealer, but I'm telling you, do your due diligence when you choose places to trade and don't get ripped off. Now, what else is good? We have instantaneous information now. I have Verizon Fios. If it goes down, I have Wi-Fi. I can go across the block to Starbucks. I mean, and anywhere you go now, you could, I could be in a cab and I have Wi-Fi. I don't have my platform on my phone, but I mean, we live in a world where you, you could be anywhere, anywhere at all and have data instantaneously about what the stock price is doing if you're in a position. So we live in we live in an amazing world and a great time where we are, it's, it's a 24 hour news cycle now. My goodness, if I go to bed at 11 o'clock and I get up the next morning at 5 a.m., a hundred things have happened in the world. I get on my Twitter, I'm like, I can't even get caught up by the time I go to the gym. We live in a world that is active and moving and we're all tied together now. Things that happen in different countries affect the U.S. market and there, it's a 24-hour market. Again, I don't trade Forex, but things that happen in other countries affect the U.S. market and vice versa. And so it's round and round, 24 hours, okay? We're all tied together, people. So it's a very interesting time that we're living in to trade and it is a good time to make money. I mean, ever since the election in the United States, uh, the market has done nothing but rally. Nothing but rally, okay? So, 
let's talk about orders. Again, instant execution. If you're taking a trade, if you're getting in and getting out, nine times out of 10, you're getting filled almost immediately. And again, I trade stocks with lots of volume. You saw the ticker symbols of the ones I looked at uh, from the last couple of days. I don't trade penny stocks. I don't do stuff that's too thin. I want to be a blip in a stock in the position I take. And if I take a couple thousand shares that I don't want anyone to notice me. So I think it's very important to trade in stocks with volume. Um, let me just see. What told you that the gap would not fail to go long? That's a question from HE. Because I have a rating system, which is what I do and what I teach in my class and what my trading room, what we all go by, that told me in the pre-market when I looked at the gap and I rated it on it on a chart, I have 26 points I used to rate the gap that it was going to get bought. It was going to follow through to higher. It rated high. I have a 26 point rating system. If the stock rates 20 points or more in the direction of the gap, it's going to go it continue in the direction of the gap. So in the case of Apple, it gapped up. It rated more than 20 points. That meant that it was going to go long. In the case of PBI today, it rated over 20 points as a short in the direction of the gap, which was a bearish gap, which will go over more later. And therefore, it told me it was going to sell off. In fact, I knew PBI would work so well today that I didn't even rate anything else. I didn't even rate anything else today in the room. And everyone said, well, look at this thing, Melissa. Look at this one. Look at this one. Look at this one. I said, I said, we're not doing anything else. This is the only one today. I had no idea it would go to some crazy, crazy number that would have a 12 in front of it when it opened at 15. But it did. Okay. And that just goes to show you, again, consistent follow through and selling. Now, I will pull up that chart in a minute here. But that, that idea also of gap fills is totally erroneous and does not work as something consistently to do to trade. I will tell you that right now, but I don't want to get too off, uh, too off target with that one. Anyways, you can do this from home and you can be anywhere and you don't have to live in the United States of America to trade. You can learn and you can do it and you can do it from anywhere. Okay. And it doesn't matter your background and you don't even have to know anything other than doing this before you come to me. In fact, sometimes I think it's better when people come to me and they never traded before because they don't have any negativity. They have no negative attitude about the market. They 100% believe they can make money. They are very positive, like this guy here. They're starting out fresh. They listen to everything I say and they tend to do well. So I'm just saying, you know, don't be shy away from trading if you have no experience or even if you have no experience day trading or doing gaps. You might do better than people that have experience because sometimes people come to me and they have to delete or flush down the toilet things that they learned that don't work. And gap fills is one of them. So let's talk about, again, long time ago, people got paid a lot of money to get information. And today there's so much information, it, it's really leveled the playing field and kind of neutralized the effect. In fact, you can even sit in on those earnings calls. Like last night, you could have listened to Apple's call. You can actually go and listen to all this stuff if you want. So the only thing that's really worth anything that you pay for is, is, you know, insider information, which guess what is illegal. So nobody does that and you're not supposed to do it. And it's usually very hard to get it anyways. And you don't want to go to jail. So you just want to look at the price and find a method and a way to do it that you can predict where it's going to go and get in and get out. You can get in and get out at an option. You can get in and get out as an equity trade. You could do it as a swing trade, a long-term investment, which by the way, probably a lot of people are in Apple as a long-term investment. Constantly making new products and people like the company. But everyone has access to everything. It's really only a matter of interpretation. It's true. It's just like Apple. If you lined up 100 people that were traders and you took a poll of those 100 peoples, how many would say, short that stock today. It's going to drop. It's going to fill the gap. It's gapped up big and it's going to drop. And then you would have somebody like me, and I'm sure I wouldn't be the only person on the planet or of 100 people that would have said to buy it. But the fact is, if you have a way to predict what the stock's going to do in the right direction, you can make money. In fact, it would be very hard for you to lose. You'd have to be a crazy person to lose money in Apple today if you went long. In fact, I can't even think of any way that you could have done it. And, and the other one too, in PBI, there's no way you could have lost money. You could have shorted that in the wind today and made money. <laughs> so you, you have to, it's so, so, so important to get the direction right. It's shorting and going long. It's one or the other. Now, if you want to be in the market or you want to do something with your money, what can you do? You can invest in and see these in savings accounts. Every once in a while, I walk by <laughs> these big signs on these banks in New York and the way they advertise these rates on the CDs, I think, oh my, Lanta. I mean, I forget what the last rate, what was the last rate I saw for a five-year CD? It was so ridiculously low. 
that I thought, who would put their money and tie their money up for five years and something like that? It was so crazy. It was so crazy. And years ago, I used to be in banking. That's what my original uh, basis was for getting involved. You know, even in the market, I, I, I did mortgages and I was in banking. I was a branch manager at a bank. And my goodness, years and years and years ago, the rates were actually, it made, you know, it made sense to have a certificate of deposit. I had a few when I was young. And even savings accounts made sense. But nowadays, it's, you say to yourself, what, can I do something better with my money than this? And guess what? You can by investing in, in day trading in the market. You have to know what to do, okay? And of course, people are in mutual funds. Some people have retirement plans. Some people have the 401k matches. If you, if you have a job and you have a company that will match your 401k and you can afford to contribute 100% and they'll match it up to a certain point, then you, you could do it. You could do it, that's good. Not every company does it anymore. There are some companies out there that are really good companies that will give you really good matches. If you can afford to do it, do it and save for your retirement, okay? And many of these mutual funds are invested in, in you know, good quality picks. Um, and again, like I said, the market's higher. And some of these stocks have really flown. Amazon, Google, Facebook, Netflix, Microsoft, the overall market, the banks. You know, I can go on and on. So if you've got money in the right things and you can write it out, all right, you can do well. You can invest money in real estate as well, but that's not a quick turnover flip. Lots of times it depends on whether you're buying at the height of the market or the, or the low of the market or the right timing. A lot of it has to do with timing of real estate and then you got to be able to hold on to it or fix it up and flip it. And that's just not a, a quick turnaround for your money. It's just not anymore. And then you have to wait if you want to sell it to, if you don't sell it to somebody for cash, if the person get approved for the mortgage. And then that's a whole process, all right? So really investing and trading is a good way to make money if you know what to do. So here's some just quick tips and facts about the market. The New York Stock Exchange was founded in 1827. Whoosh, that's a long time ago. Can you believe that? The largest based on capitalization over 4,000 listings. The Dow is typically Dow for the short. I don't really look at the Dow that much. I must tell you, I typically do not look at the Dow, but I know a lot of people like it, and they do, and we hit up over a big, big number. I don't know if it was last week. Yeah, I think it was last week or the week before in the Dow. The NASDAQ composite has about 5,000 stocks. The Standard & Poor's 500 knows the S&P, includes the banks, okay? And then you have the Russell 2000. So... You know, I tend to focus on, there's two market ETFs that I focus on. Okay, I'll write it in the room. It's the SPY, which includes the banks, and the QQQs. Oops, did that go? And the QQQs. All right, those are the two that I look at their ETFs. So typically, these are the exchanges. There used to be a big difference, but not so much anymore. All right? You can look at these and go online and research if you want to find out more, but you have to have access to the stocks on these exchanges if you want to go long or short the stocks that I'm trading. Now, there are stocks that have different sectors, and, and I look at different sectors. If I have a certain stock, like the stocks that were in the Apple sector today, they probably rallied with Apple, okay? So you have semiconductor stocks, oil stocks, precious metal stocks, utility stocks, retail stocks. And these are just some examples. So typically, if you have something that is gapping and moving in one direction in the sector, it could be for earnings or news, you may have the other ones in the sector going in the same direction, and you can play them all. Now, again, I like to trade stocks or companies. And one of the reasons is because people tend to have emotional investments in companies. Like I said, people love Apple or whatever, okay? Or they may love Netflix. So I tend to want to focus on companies themselves, but there are things called ETFs. Now, what is an ETF? It's exchange traded fund, a security that tracks an index, a commodity, or a basket of assets like an index fund, but trades like a stock or an exchange. That's what the QQQs and the spiders is. ADRs is something that I really don't trade. I tend to not want to do these, but I will look at them. And pink sheets, again, I don't do it all either. But these are some other things that you can trade. Now let's talk more about shorting because I said this is what I mainly like to do. If you've never shorted before, what does it mean? It means that you're really predicting that the stock price will fall and you were getting in it at a certain price. For example, you might short the stock at $15 and if the stock drops to 14, 
you would make what? A dollar by betting or taking the trade, for example, or predicting that the stock price will drop. So you can make money in other ways, not going long. So you're playing the security to decline in price and you make money as prices fall. And then if it rallies, you're going to lose. And that's why, like I was saying, you had to have been short PBI today to make money. So you're making money predicting the price will drop and then shorting it before the price drops. All right. And this is how you do it. So you have to have a trading account that allows you to short wherever you go, wherever you have your platform, wherever you have your money, you have to be able to short. A, a lot of day traders do short but not a lot of day traders know how to short correctly or where to short. Sometimes I short into people, it seems like I'm shorting into the no man's land or the wind, but I actually have a reason for doing it and a setup and, and it very often works for me, okay? Now let's talk a little bit about technical analysis compared to fundamental analysis. Technical analysis is a method of evaluating securities by analyzing statistics generated by market activity, such as past prices and volume. I don't focus that much on volume, but like I said, I won't trade stocks with no volume or low volume. Technical analysis do not attempt to measure securities intrinsic value, but instead use charts and other tools to identify patterns that can suggest future activity. And this is really what I do. Okay, this is what I do. I am predicting what the next move of something, for example, like Apple will be by looking at the past price data on the chart. That's how I made the prediction the stock when it gapped up would follow through today and the various numbers that the stock will rally and go to. In my opinion, technical analysis works and you don't need anything else to trade and you can make money doing this and only this. Now, the people that do like to use fundamentals and read stuff, you can do that if it helps your conviction level to take the train, but you don't need to. You don't need to at all. One issue is that very few people are trained properly in how to use technical analysis. Very, very few people know what to do because they are looking at something like the lower highs and lower lows in Apple. Let me quick go back to this one here. Look, this is this is going to hit 130 today. Oh my lanta. Oh my lanta. Look at this. Look at that. All right, let me go back to what I was saying. Let's look at that. It's fantastic. Anyways, many many people, okay, are seeing this that look at technical analysis and they're seeing this and they're thinking that this is a resistance area that it's making a lower high from the previous high over here which was 128 this morning and then it makes a pivot here and then people are looking to short it because it made a lower high and they're thinking it's not going to continue higher but that's not true as you can see it did so many people don't know what to focus on on technical analysis things they use indicators that don't give enough information to help them make money or they focus on the wrong things. I'm not saying pivots and, th and things like this can't help you, but it's not the reason to take the trade or not. What is the gap? The gap itself is what is directing you how to play it. And this is what you're following, not this thing here. Because you can't short every lower high and lower low and you can't, you can't go long every uh, higher high and, and, and uh, higher low. And many, many people just want to play support or resistance, but it doesn't always work. And that's how people use technical analysis. And then they wonder why they don't make money. Because you have to have a strategy intact to play it. And for me, it is gaps. Okay. So technical analysis history dates back to hundreds of years ago. It can be said the principles of technical analysis are derived from the observation of financial markets over a very long time. And the oldest well-known technical analysis method was developed in the early 18th century, which used candlesticks, which we'll talk about in a minute. And I do use the candlesticks to determine the points, all right? This is very, very important because candlesticks to pick price. Now, if you're a person that likes this kind of thing like fundamentals, fine, use it. Use it in conjunction with the technical analysis, but you've got to use technical analysis because you cannot ignore the price because that's really what is telling you what it's worth. If you want to sell Apple today at $129.85 and hit that price and you can sell it. You can talk and talk and talk and talk and talk about whatever the fundamentals said that said it was worth this or this or that, but you only know what the price is trading at right now that you could sell the stock. You could say, well, I, I'm telling you, this is going to go to here and it's going to go to 135, and you, but you can't sell it for 135 today. Nobody's going to buy it at 135 today. It's not trading at 135. It's trading at whatever, 129 something, all right? You have to hold it if you think it's going to 135. And when will it go there? You don't know. 
This method of evaluating stocks attempts to measure the value of a particular stock. The fundamental approach examines the balance sheet income statement P ratio. Some people love these things. Again, I don't use this. Management, again, people love to look at that in a company like Apple. Book value, industry conditions, and overall health of the economy, which right now actually is, is, is acting like it's very, very strong in the U.S. Okay, that is how it is acting. Whether we're in a heap load of debt or not, nobody seems to care as far as the market goes. There's an overall optimism that is real. It's happening, and you're seeing it play out in the market. So fundamental issues of fundamentals is, you know, compared to the technicals is where do you enter and exit something? If you say, well, the, fu the fundamentals tell me this is going up. Okay, fine. It's going up, and then where do you get in? You know, you know this is what I'm saying. Where are you getting in and where are you getting out? Using fundamentals means that despite the fact that, for example, 50 million shares just traded at 1425, I'm just throwing a number out there, that you feel the stock is worth more based on the classified document you read on the internet or you were in, in the call, in the, on the earnings call or whatever. And this is a little interesting tip here too. I'm sure some of you remember this. Guess who had one of the best balance sheets ever? Enron. And a lot of these things have to do, when they look at this, has to do with the accounting practices. Okay? And this is like way too complicated to get into right now but it's something I just want to point out. And it's not something that I use to make my picks because you don't need to use it. Differences in acceptable accounting methods can produce huge differences in the bottom line, and they do. And it is not that fundamentals are not relevant. It's that they are already built into the price because what you're looking at right now is the thing that matters, okay? Um, let me just see here. Did I do, just to make sure I didn't miss any questions. Was the last question at 201? Just want to make sure. So let's talk here at news. Somebody say hi or something so I know I didn't screw something up when I, when I wrote in the room. I don't think I did, but somebody say hi so I know. News will usually cause a knee-jerk reaction, okay? Short-term or immediate reaction. But whether or not that news follows through is reversed depends. Is the news really good or bad? You don't know. It's not easy always to determine. And, and then, of course, something could have news, and it, you could seem like a good if the stock gaps up, but then it could collapse. It could collapse into the gap. So very often, news reactions also can't be predicted ahead of time. Okay, there we go. I got a high from Philip. So economic data often create stocks and gaps, very often, okay, and news. And it may or may not be significant in the long-term outlook, but remember what we're doing, we are day trading. Okay, we're day trading. Now let's talk about some um, indicators here and some things that I use like candlesticks and charts. So this is a daily chart. It's a daily chart here and you can see, I just wanna show you. You have the moving price over here, okay? Volume's down at the bottom. I like a white background, you can do anything you want, but I prefer the white. This is a 200 period moving average. This is a 50 period moving average. This is a 20 period moving average. And this, is, this black line here is an eight. Again, you can make them whatever colors, but these are the colors I like. And then these are candlesticks, they're Japanese candlesticks. There are many, many books on candlesticks out there. You can read them and read them for the rest of your life. Tons and tons of books. And there's fancy dancy names for them. I don't uh, use any fancy names for candlesticks, but I do watch what they're doing. I do see what they're doing. I look at them and the green is depicting buying in them and the red is depicting selling action, okay? So here, for example, this is a bullish bar. This is a bearish bar, okay? So the green depicts buying. The red depicts selling. In a bullish bar that is rallying on the day, the bottom of the bar, okay, is the low. The top is the high. In an ideal world, a full-body green bar that we are very, very strong, and this is probably how Apple's going to close today. Apple looks very much like this right now, although we don't close till 4 o'clock, but the low looks like this, and it's not going to break it. It's not going to break it at all. So Apple will close today with it looking like this, and we'll see how the top looks. It might look like that when it closes. So this is a very, very strong bar. This is a very weak bar. PBI, I don't know how it's going to close, but it might close like this, where the high of the open and the stock selling and dropping all day, and it closes at the low of the bottom of the body. This depicts selling action, and it's weak. Okay? And then you have reversal bars down here. And this is called a doji in some circles. It's a neutral bar that doesn't have a color at all. The stock closes and opens at the same price. So you can study these things 
on your own or look up books and there's tons of free stuff online. But this is what I use on my charts. And again, technical analysis is looking at a chart and reading the candlestick formations as they move, okay? So moving averages are there for a purpose, but I don't live and die by taking trades by them. There are tons and tons of technical indicators you can put on things. Your platform itself actually pre-programs them. You click in and put them and make them yourself and you can put whatever ones on that you want. I showed you the ones I use, but I, I encourage people to not use too many. If you use too many, you will, it will take away from your ability to be able to actually focus on what the stock is doing and moving and the price, and that is very important. It's more important than having all these different indicators. If there was one indicator that told you everything that you needed to know in the world, then we'd all have it. We'd all make millions of dollars, and it also wouldn't work because it would be impossible for um, us to make millions of dollars <laughs> because... It's a zero-sum game when you're trading, okay? If we all did something that worked, you can't have a million winners and no losers. That's not how the market is. So there is no one indicator or two indicators that work all the time, okay? So you want to find some that help you make it easier to look at something in a certain direction. I do use a one-minute chart, a two-minute chart, a five-minute chart, a 15-minute chart, and I use the daily. I determine the gap from the daily, and I take trades in the one-minute chart, which we're going to look at here. But those indicators that I talked about are the same ones that I use in all my charts. Now, let's talk about gaps. What is a gap? A gap refers, like I said, where the opening price is different from the closing price. Stocks trade in pre-market and post-market. So after 4 o'clock, you have post-market trades going off. But it's not the live day. But that's where the gap is being created. Or the gap could happen in the morning. All right? When the market opens in the morning. And something could happen like an earnings report or a news report or a CEO getting fired or a sector gap like we talked about. Now, I said this before. I don't, I don't really like to trade ADRs. And the reason is because these stocks have their primary market overseas and they may be trading several hours before the U.S. market opens and the price is adjusted. So it, it almost looks like ADRs gap every day, but they're, but they're not really real, quote unquote, real gaps. You don't really can't really look at them and rate them the same as normal stocks. So I typically do not trade ADRs. OK, now let's talk about, again, what is a gap and what causes a gap? A gap is a difference between yesterday's closing price and today's opening price. It's based on the 4 o'clock close, which is real, and probably we will always have a close in the U.S. market, and the 9.30 open, and I'm only trading between 9.30 and 4. I usually trade in a minimum out of my trades in the first 30 minutes or hour of the day. That's what I like to do. Unless I'm in an option, I may trade it longer overnight. But what gaps do is they create a void where there seems like there's no trades that go off on the daily chart when you look at it. Do you see here where the stock closed here, and then it gapped down? Yes, times are Eastern time zone. Eastern time zone, think New York Wall Street. Okay, so close here, open here, boom, here's the void. Now, you have to be able to predict with this void, is the void going to continue? Is it going to sell off or is it going to fill this gap, which somebody mentioned earlier, is it going to rally? In this case here, it was a short. Okay, and my method predicts that it was a short ahead of time before you see the drop. Now, anyways, the point is, this is a space that happens between the close and the open, and that is what a gap is. Here was today's, again, I already showed you this. This was earlier. This, is, this was insane today. Anyways, the stock closed here and gapped down. So it closed last night at 1587 or something. It opened this morning around 15 bucks. So the stock gapped down, and here's the void. Boom. Okay. So what is a stock? It's an event. Apple gapping up was an event. I'm playing a strategy that's an event. I'm playing the event. The event is the gap. What creates the event? What creates the gap? A lot of things. Anything. Anything at all. An election can create a gap. But I'm determining how I'm going to trade it long or short based on my rating system, which is a checklist, which is 26 points. But the strategy is the gap. Not doing higher highs or higher lows or buying support or short and resistance. It is based on the gap itself, or not even doing anything with indicators, okay? This means that an event that happens, happens, and it happens 
at night or in the morning before the open, okay? But it happens between 4 and, at 4.01 and, you know, 9, 9.29 the next day. Buying and selling pressure builds up into the open, and then something happens. What? You get selling action, or you get buyers coming in, or you get shorting action, okay? These are all the possible things. So what could the event be? It may be news about the economy. It may be news about a sector. It may be news about a single stock, like an earnings report, like happened with Apple, like I just said. Many, many reasons. But the big reason why you can make money trading gaps and the number one reason why you see moves like Apple and PBI today is massive buying or selling, okay? It's institutional money that is, that is trading tons and tons and tons and tons of volume in the stock. And if you are with that in the right direction, you'll make money by doing nothing, just taking the trade and getting out. And whether you get out at, at, at 9.35 or 9.45 or 10.02, if you're in the right direction, whether you hold it to the target or not, it doesn't matter, you're up. The way that you make money as a trader, and that's why I showed you the statistics for the last eight days and the last nine picks, is that you've got to get the pick right more. You have to win more times, more times than you'll lose. More, you have to have more winning times, more winning days. You have to have more winning days than losing days. Okay? If you take a huge, massive trade, like let's just say, and there's no way you would have done this on the planet, but let's just say you shorted PBI. Let's just look where it's at now. It's, it's probably ridiculous now, but let's look at it. Let's just say, there's no way you would have held this to this number because I didn't even give the number because you wouldn't have even known that it would go to the number. But let's just say you shorted this here at the entry today that I called in the room, which was, it was sick, actually. It was 1489. <laughs> it was 1489. It was 20 cents off the high. That's hilarious. Anyways, the stock dropped $2.50. From that call, there's no way you would have held it. No one in the room, I'm sure, did. There's no way you would have known it would go to that number. Let's just say you did. Let's just say you did. Let's say you did and you got this huge, massive, huge, huge trade. You made a million dollars today. If you lose for the next nine days, you're going to give it all back. You have to get more winning days than losing days. That's it. You can have amazing trading days. We've all had them. You can have huge wins, bigger than expected. No one would have held this at 1240, though, I'm telling you. The point is, though, you still have to have more days that you get the pick right, in the direction right, or you won't make it. You won't make money. You won't make money in the short term. You won't make money in the long term. You won't make money for the month or for the week or for the year. And that's what you, what you want to do. I mean, that's why you're doing this. That's why I do it, too. Okay? So it's a rare edge to find something that has a high probability of consistency and also the movement, the movement, the movement and the volume, okay, which comes in with the institutional money. Now, let's look at this one here. This was TXT. This gap down, closed through the night before, gap down, dropped. It's a short. You short it, short it, short it. It flipped. It bounced later in the afternoon. But here was the short, and we did it. Now, what did you do? You would have done this. And if you just would have done it in the morning, although it did go farther, you would have shorted this here, boom, you could have gotten a dollar out of it. Now, what does that mean for someone like you? It means, and I'm just trying to break this down so you can understand it. If you have 500 shares and it's short and the stock drops a dollar, what's your profit? 500 bucks. If you have 5,000 shares and the stock drops a dollar, what's your profit? $5,000. Okay? So if you have if you have a move in something, you can make money in it, getting the push, which I try to do right into the beginning of the part of the day, which in here, let's go back. I try to get in and I just go right into the part, right into the morning. You get the push down, okay? So what I do every day is predict where the movement's going to go right away, okay? And they dumped it and they dumped it, okay? They dumped it into the into the open, and you could have gotten it, all right? But this is how you make money. So it has to do with the share quantity, the share quantity and the move and the right direction. So you think about it, it's, you know, you're adding to the selling pressure when you're shorting the stock, but what really, really makes 
good moves in shorts is selling. You would never have a move like PBI today if you didn't have selling. It's, it's, it's selling action. And this stock, let me just pull it up really quickly. On the one minute chart here, look at that. Look at that. That is, in fact, let's just look. From 930, that's insane. For 19 minutes straight, the stock sold off. Look at that. That's selling. So you were predicting the selling action and you're shorting it, and that's how you make money. You make money shorting predicting selling action. That's not to say there aren't shorts in there, but that's how you really make a lot of money going short. And how do you make a lot of money going long? Well, you're, you predict the buying too, like an Apple. So that's what gives me an edge is I predict in the gap where the stock's gonna go on the live day, and that's what I do. And the bottom line is, and I'm predicting what institutions are going to do with it. Big, big money that comes in. And that's how I make money. And that is how you can make money if you want to come trade with me. I like to short because panic comes in in selling action. And it creates fear and you tend to get big drops. And you tend to get big moves that happen quick. As longs take longer to go, Apple will probably rally right up into the close. You know, would you want to hold that all day? It's up to you. Preferably as a day trader, I think trading the morning and being done and being up and out is a good thing. You keep your profits in the morning and do whatever you want to do in the afternoon. So I typically look to get in and out in the first 30 minutes of the day of the stocks that I train, whether long or short. But like I'm saying, I prefer to short. But here's some here you can look at and see. This is a smaller time frame, not the daily, but it's showing you how the move happened very quickly when the stock closed here and gapped down, it got sold off right into the morning. You see here, this is right, here's the 9.30, and it's dropping right into the 10, 10.30 period. See where the arrow's going. Same thing over here, and this one here was Asna. Again, open, drop, fall, collapse. Again, where? Into the first half an hour of the day. In fact, this happened this first 15 minutes. See it? So I'm predicting that this will fall, so you short it. And that's what you do. Here's another one here. Open, rally, boom, get the move. Right into the first half an hour, first hour of the day. Does it matter where you get out? No. You get out here, 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 here. What about this one here? Again, fell off a planet. Look at the price of the stock. It was a rinker dink. $4. I will do stuff that's cheap. I'm not doing penny stocks. This has volume. Groupon moves. Look at the move that the stock had. Boom, drop. Okay. Short it, get out. Short it, get out. But you got to know to watch it. You got to know to watch this one here, the Groupon. You got to know to have the pick. This is right on the open, people. Okay? This is where you're getting the flush. Boom, boom. All right? Now, let's talk about how much money can you make, costs involved to trade. What do you need to do this? Like, do you need a college degree, a trading license, or any experience? These are all good questions. The fact is that you do not need a college degree or any degree or any license to trade. You don't. If you want to go get licensed, you'll learn more information. You'll have a license. You could go get a job at somewhere at a trading desk if you want to. Work for someone else. Trade their funds. Trade their money. You could become a stockbroker. But you still should have a strategy that you use to determine the trades that you're taking or why you are taking them, even if you get licensed. All right? If you trade your own funds, you do not need a license. And you don't need a college degree. So you really only need what? A strategy or system that consistently works. A reason you're taking the trade, which for me, it's the reason is the stock is gapping and it rates 20 points or more. That's my reasoning and my system is called the golden gap. You need a computer, you need an internet connection, you need a day trading account or a trading account where you would do options trades. You can contact many, many brokers. There's lots out there. You need to have charts that give you pre and post market data. You need a one minute chart and a daily chart. Those are the only charts you have to have. You've got to be able to short if you want to do my method because I'm mostly short. So costs involved to trade or what? If you want to do my class, my class is $5,000. If you want to go to a broker, you have to pay commissions to the broker. And like I said, they vary from $2 to seven bucks. Some are $9.99 a trade but you can you know, find places that are cheaper. So you will have to pay a charge to get in and a charge to get out to take the trade. 
you also will pay platform fees when you go and open up an account. They could range from free platforms. Some uh, brokerage dealers have free platforms. Some platforms can go up to 450 bucks a month. It depends how, you know, what kind of platform you want to get. And then how much money can you make? The amount of money that you make depends on the amount of size that you take in the trade. That's what it depends on, and it depends on your level of consistency. The consistent number of wins that you get versus your losses. You must have more wins than losses, or you will not make money trading. That's the bottom line. You can have one huge day, one huge big win. You can have one huge monster week. But if the rest of your weeks are losing weeks of all the years that you trade, you will be down. So you have to have a system and a strategy that is consistently profitable. It's the only way that you're going to make it. So talking about share size here, just breaking it down again, and then I'll take any questions because I'm almost done. If you have 1,000 shares and the stock moves 50 cents, how much would you make? 500 bucks. If you have a move, the stock moves 50 cents, you have 2,500 shares, how much will you make? 1,250 bucks. If the stock was 50 cents, you have 5,000 shares, you make 2,500 bucks. Can you live in 2,500 bucks a week in one trade a day? The answer is yes. Anyone could. I mean, that's good money. Even $500 a day is good money because it amounts to about $2,500 a week, and that is good money trading. Many day traders are not making that. That's 10 grand a month. That's more than six figures a year. That's enough money to do it for a living. But you got to be consistent, and you got to get the right picks. And when you lose and you have a trade that doesn't work, and, and the one yesterday did not work. You can't look, you can't do five other stock symbols. You can't say, oh, this one didn't work. I'm going to do this one and this one and this one and this one and this one. That's how people blow up. You have one day and something doesn't work. Whether well, you take one trade or two trades in it, it shouldn't kill you. But you can't train from 9.30 to 4 o'clock looking to get back one loss that happens in the morning. And this is where many people don't understand and they falter, all right? You've got to understand that tomorrow you'll get up and you'll get it. You'll get up and you'll get it tomorrow. You'll get up and get it the next day. If you believe in your system, you trust in your system, and you have conviction in what you do, which I do, I do because I created the system myself and I also do because I've been trading for eight years, then you will know that in your mind and feel okay about it, accept the one loss that you have and get up the next day and go in and make money and just do it. Any questions at all as I'm talking here? So. My class is called the Golden Gap System. It's a professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist, and that is how I do it. This checklist tells you what to trade and when. It measures gaps by rating them on the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Number two, a big move on the day. Number three, early confirmation of the bias and move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. And number four, precise entries with follow-through and a good risk-to-reward target potential. That doesn't mean you're holding every trade to the target, but many of them do go to the target. The time of the day varies, though. Sometimes I get out of a trade because I want to get out by 10, 10, 15, 9, 45 even, and I have things to do the rest of the day. But the stock could keep dropping, which some of them have, like the one today in the PBI. It kept dropping all day. You could have been in it all day. That's not what I like to do, but in there's different cases where things just keep going, and that was one of them. But my system teaches you how to trade, and more than that, it really it actually teaches you how to make money, okay? It's, a, it's based on the points. And you learn in the class of 26 points. You learn how to enter the stock, how to exit it. You learn how to look at technical analysis, read charts and gaps. You learn how to look at what is really happening. Is an institution buying this and why? Is an institution selling this and how am I seeing that? It's a, it's a window into my brain and into my mind. And that's what you learn in the class. And it is a system that you would do and follow. And listen to what I say if you're in the training room too and take the calls and take the trades and do it. Okay, I do not enter the pre-market. Yes, that's correct. I wait until the open. So if you're interested, my class is next weekend, February 11th and 12th, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. It's online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. And actually, half my clients are international. They don't even live in the U.S. So it doesn't matter where you live. You can trade the market. Uh, the time zone, though, that I live in and trade in is Eastern Time Zone, and it is the time zone of the market, okay? So the cost of the class is $49.99. Retakes are free. Once you sign up one time, you can take it as many times as you want for free. And it is taught online, and it's live, and it's full on, 9 to 5, okay? And you're, 
and you will pay attention and you will learn many, many things. So I'm doing a webinar special. If you want to sign up by this Saturday, I'm giving the trading room free through June 30th, 2017. That is amazing. That means you could be in the room and take every trade that I call and do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday between now and the end of June. That gives you plenty of time to learn and then you'll know if you want to stay in the room after that. If you want to stay in the room after that, great. If not, you learn everything in the class to do it on your own. It's up to you. I try to encourage people to do their best. I try to mentor them. I try to talk to them. I answer your questions. You get me in the room live every day, okay? The class sign-up forms are not on my website. You must email me for the forms if you want to sign up. And the deadline is Saturday. No exceptions. But you'd be signed up ahead of time. You could be in the room and you could start the room next week if you want to be in the room. One guy today uh, uh, calls himself Rumi in the room, which is a funny, funny name. Um, but he already signed up for the class for February, and he made almost two thousand dollars today, or was a little over two thousand dollars. I think he did that. He did that PBI twice. He got in and got out, and he got back in again. So he paid for almost half the class just being in the one day this week. I don't know if he's done anything else this week or not, but he told me he did that today. But he did it twice. So, you know, I mean, it's up to you. You could be in the room, though, next week. I suggest, though, you be careful uh, until you do the class. But if you already have a trading account, you could do it. And I just and I actually just gave you a free trade here today in the Apple option. You could do it. I mean, the Apple option is out till the end of next week. You're going to pay up now for it versus this morning if you've gotten it. But it's going to go over 130 uh, the best price was to get into the open today. But I just gave you a trade today if you want to do it. You got an hour and 15 minutes to take it. You know. All right, let's see the questions. Uh, what account size do you suggest to start with minimum? If you want to go to a proprietary day trading firm, you can open up an account with as little as 2500 but I would suggest 5000 to start. You get 10 to 1 buying power, which would be a $50,000 buying power account, which is good enough to take the day trades and make money. Depending on where you go, you have to ask them if they will do options or not. If you want to go to a retail place, like somebody mentioned Ameritrade, you would need how much to do a day trading? You would need at least 25000 but you actually need more than that at a retail account because if you go and under one penny under 25000 you will get a call, a day trading call, and then you will have to put in the one penny. So you actually need more than 25000 at, at a retail firm, and your leverage uh, is 4 to 1. So you would have 100000 in buying power if you had 25000 in a retail account, which, again, is more than enough to trade my system. I don't tend to take extremely expensive stocks as a day trades. If I take something that's 65 bucks, that's, that's, you know, that's in the higher range for me to do in a day trade. I'm not saying that I don't do stuff that's over $100 price point. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I definitely do if it's a good gap. But I do tend to stay in the range of price points between $5 and you know, 60, 65 bucks. It's not that I'll never do anything over 100, but I am doing option trades that are might be expensive stocks, but that has nothing to do with the price point. You don't need to worry about buying power. So there's two options. If you want referrals for brokers, you can email me, but there's a bazillion places. But I, you only have to make sure that you can short. So the buying power is what you need to be concerned about to take the positions, and then you will have a stop loss on the day, which will be dependent on the amount of cash that you have in the stock in, the, in your account. If you have a five thousand dollar proprietary day trading account, you cannot risk a thousand dollars in your trades. That would be ridiculous. You can't risk twenty percent of your account in one trade. So. If you have a $5,000 proprietary day trading account with a $50,000 buying power, I would risk $200, $250 $250 in a trade. Okay? And with that, what if you made $500 a day? You should be able to turn it around at least once or twice, a couple of times a week. That's good. You could build it up. You could build up the $5,000 account to a $10,000 account. You could open up a $2,500 account. Don't take any money out. Trade, build it up. Build it up as long as it takes, okay? Build it. You know, not everybody can start out exactly where they want to be, which is what? At the top. Nobody starts at the top. Nobody does. Nobody in the world. Get realistic. If you start to get realistic with what you can achieve, guess what? You're going to start to get somewhere with yourself and your life and your trading. Many, many people are not realistic. I 
in general, I'm not really that realistic, except for the fact that I'm very goal oriented. So I am realistic in the sense that I am a high achiever, but so it seems that I'm not realistic if you know me because I have such extremely high goals for myself, but I, I always achieve them. But I'm realistic in the fact that it may take work to get there and therefore it may take time. So over the years, I've, I've become more patient with myself to achieve my goals, knowing that it will take me time. I'm, I'm still completely, completely not realistic compared to the normal person for my goals, but I always seem to achieve the goals I set out for myself because I'm willing to work hard to do it. And I'm willing to understand that it takes time. But what I have found that people are not realistic is that they, the time of the money that they want to make and the time that they want to do it for where they're at with their life and the money that they have. So what I'm saying to you is have great big goals, but go easy on yourself where you're at right now so that you can get off the ground to start achieving them. Wait until you have $25,000 in cash to open up a retail account and can quit your job and trade full time and have 100 grand in the bank to go and not work for a year till you learn it is probably not realistic. So what can you do? Well, you can have this amazing goal that you're gonna make money in the market. That's realistic. But what's your path to get there? Your path to get there may not be this extreme thing where you're gonna have all this money in the world, you're gonna have all this time off to study and focus and do it and da 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 da, da. No, okay? And where you're gonna risk a thousand dollars with a twenty five hundred dollar account. No, 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 no. You have to say, here I am right now at this point. This is what my goal is. Okay. It's good to say to yourself, well, I would like to achieve this goal within 12 months or three months or six months or two years, but you may not. You may achieve it before you think, or it may take you longer, but you still need to have a plan of action to get there. And as long as you're on the path to do that, you'll be fine. What happens is having no plan of action or a totally unrealistic plan of action, which is to roll out of bed in the morning, quit your job and have no money in the bank and have a $2,500 account. I mean, you have to be you know, thoughtful about what you're doing. Don't quit your job or risk too much money trading, don't risk the farm if you don't know what to do, okay? And you, you absolutely should not be trading any money at all in the market if you don't have a strategy. I'm just telling you right now, don't do it. And there are people that do it. I talk to people that tell me they have no money and they have a retail account with 25,000 in there and they tell me they can't afford the class and they, they have no strategy, they have nothing to do and they trade every day. They trade every day and they lose and they refund it. They trade every day and they lose 200, 300, they keep refunding it and they have a job and they keep refunding it but they're getting nowhere. And five years from now, that $25,000 account, they will have refunded $25,000 over and probably $50,000 over and still be working their job and not know what to do and losing money in the market because they don't have a strategy. You've got to have goals that you can achieve and a plan of action to get there. And you got to be a little bit realistic with yourself, but you can have high goals and you can be a high achiever like me, but you have to be realistic about how you're going to get there and the time frame to do it. Trust me, I've learned the hard way. Most of the money that I lost actually was at the very, very beginning of my trading career. In the first three months, I lost most of the money that I lost before I figured all this stuff out. If I could go back in time and rewind and go back to 2008, I, I would never have risked the money that I risked when I started out. But I couldn't, I can't go back, it's too late, and I can't go back and neither can you. So we can only go forward. And that's all that we can do, and that's all that we will do, okay? so. Figure it out, get a plan of action, get your head on straight, okay? Think about the things I said tonight. Good group, or this afternoon, I don't even know what time it is. It's dark here in New York, it looks like it's gonna snow again. Does anyone have any questions? My email is melissa at thestockswish.com. Thank you, Investing, for having me. You're amazing as always. Very, very nice people here at this company. Good people, decent people, honest people. And these things matter in this world, let me tell you that. All right, have a good day, everyone. You're welcome.